Hi guys, welcome back to the Player YouTube channel. And the reason I'm starting this review of this car from behind is because it looks very similar to another car that we've reviewed a while ago, namely the Fiat 500. So if you click up there now, there's a couple of those. There's an electric one and another one. They're a really great little car. This one, the only resemblance really it has is this boot, I think, and these lights. The rest of it is completely different because Fiat call this the 500X and apparently it's an urban crossover, which if you ask me, is like a Chinese restaurant that suddenly renames itself as Asian fusion. It's still Chinese food, and this is still a Fiat, even if it is an urban crossover. Let's take a look around it, let's get under the bonnet, let's get it out on the road, and see what we think of the Fiat 500X. Right, so that's the last time we're gonna talk about Fiat 500 resemblances here. Let's talk about this car. And first of all, you'll notice it's a four door car. And secondly, you'll notice it's quite sort of jacked up. It's quite high, it sits very high. Um, another thing I really like about this car are the arches. They've actually got like a little flared arch kit there as well. And you get a decent set of 18 inch alloys. You also get foldy any mirrors and these ones are the metallic. They sort of, yeah, really nice. I like these. Get a little sport badge and again, you get this sort of arch kit. This car is like, um, I don't know, it's almost like it's been given a shot of steroids. It's like beefy. It's been down the gym. It don't want to come out. It wants to stay in the gym and work out. You get these really nice LED headlights. You get running lights here, again, LEDs around there. Fog lights down the bottom, a couple of grills. Well, in actual fact, you get one, two, three grills on this. But I love the little squat bonnet. Again, it's sort of like, it's like, Whoa, you're all right. Let's have a look under the bonnet and see what the choices are with the engines. Under the bonnet, the 500X comes with a couple of different engine choices. You've got a three cylinder, one litre engine, petrol, turbocharged, around about 120 brake horsepower or you've got the option on a 1.3 four-cylinder engine, which develops around about 150 brake horsepower. Two choices on the gearbox. You've got a nine-speed auto, and like this car's got a six-speed manual. Both really nice, to be honest with you. It's your choice. Three different trim levels with tons and tons of derivatives off of them. You've got urban, cross, and like this one, the sport. Round at the back, the start at the top, because you get a decent rear spoiler with a built-in brake light in there, which is quite nice. You get quite a large rear windscreen on this, or rear screen, however you want to call it. And this one is one of those lovely floaty ones, so you don't get that horrible rubber that runs all the way around. It gives it a much better definition, and at the same time, the water doesn't sit in there and rot away at the, uh, the metal work, which is a really good thing that is on all modern cars now. You get a wash and wipe up there, which you'd expect anyway, um, and then that little reminiscent bit of the 500 with the lights either side there, the LEDs on this as well. Down at the bottom here, you do get a really nice double chrome tailpipe. Well, this is the sport after all. Let's have a look inside. So simple in the middle there, lift up just like the 500. No assisted tail lift, but then you weren't expecting that. It's got a couple of decent gas struts up here. First up, and the first thing I want to tell you about, because I am so pleased about this, I've really wanted something like this to talk about. There you go, space saver. That's what these cars need. If it's gonna be in the town and it's going out in the country, sooner or later, you're gonna clump a wheel. And sometimes when you clump a wheel, you can't use those stupid puncture repair kits to pump it back up again. They just don't work. Useless, 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 useless. This is what all of these need. And I think this is genius thinking on behalf of Fiat. So well done, Fiat, fantastic. Space over in there. Unfortunately, that's where the well done's go completely out the window because the next bit is a very sad state of affairs because I am fed up with these ridiculous, plastic, horrible, look, yeah, I mean, I'm happy to say if this goes somewhere inside, because if you're out on the road and you've suddenly picked up a load of shopping or collected your kids and they've got their bikes with them or whatever, and suddenly you go, oh, I forgot to take this out before I left. What are you gonna do with it? Well, if it can go under here, fantastic, then they're worth having. Um, but this one, there, there's just nowhere for it to go. And we've tested it, there isn't, there's nowhere it can go. I know some of you have written in in the comments section in previously and said, oh, you need it to cover up your valuables in the back. Don't take valuables with you. I mean, why did you want valuables in the back anyway? Come on. Anyway, so that's where that goes. Get rid of the things, they're useless, unless they go under there. Now, let's have a look at this. 350 litres of boot space. That's what I call a boot. You can get stuff in here. You can get four dogs, three bags of shopping, a couple of bicycles. You know, it's amazing. Now check this out, ready? 
Over here, just push the little thing forward like that. You got, look at that. Both of the seats have gone down together. That's a 60-40 split. And now you've got a thousand liters of boot space. Let me show you how big it is in it because it is absolutely amazing. Look at this. You could go camping in here for the weekend. It's huge, absolutely stunning. And you've got this really nice and high here so you can get stuff in and out. There aren't any shopping bag holders. Ooh, dear, that's gonna make a big decision on me. And there's no 12 volt adapter. Ooh, that's just put me off as well. Don't be stupid, guys. If you want it, you can add it. I'm sure there's a pack you can buy. You can add those bits and pieces in. This car really does tick all the family boxes. As for the urban crossover bit, well, we need to get it out on the road to check that, don't we? First up, let's have a look in the back for the passengers. Let's check out in the back for the passengers. Before I jump in, look at the, the door angle on this. It's, it's almost, you know, it's almost 45 degrees. It's amazing. So that makes getting in and out of this car absolutely simple. And to be honest, if you've got, say, grandma or the mother-in-law, it's going to make her life a lot easier. And with the kids as well, because it's got the ISFX point so you can get your seats in here for the little brats. And unfortunately, it doesn't have the middle bit that comes down where you can rest your arm. There's nothing there. Um, another thing I did notice, it's got one USB. Fear, what is going on? I mean, this is for a family. You know, you get two youngsters, they want to plug in. What's going to happen? They're gonna fight over that. That's gonna cause an argument. That's gonna upset you. You're not gonna enjoy your drive. And all for what? The sake of an extra USB? Come on, Fiat, stick your two USBs in there. Um, you do get a nice place to put all your knickknacks and your bits and bobbies that the kids are throwing about while they're in the back here. And they're not granny's stockings. They're actually a proper place to put it there, which is quite nice. Um, very low transmission tunnel. And that makes life a lot easier. And the recessed seat belts, a lot easier for sliding across to the middle. Now. This is boozy lunch syndrome, isn't it? You know what I'm talking about. You get down the pub with your manager and your, you know, the HR manager as well, and the three of you having a nice time. You bump into Angela and, you know, Sylvia from Graphics, and they both had one too many. And this car is just spot on for you accompanying them back while your manager and his mate drive you back to the office because they can't drive their car. So that I'll put this down as boozy lunch car. It's perfect for that. There you go. And uh, I'm sure, uh, sure Angela and uh, Sylvia <laughs> will enjoy their ride back. Um, there you go, said with rather a perverted voice at the end there, but never mind. We love the finish on this, very easily to wipe it clean in case you get any mess on there. Let's go and have a look up front. Let's check out up front for the driver. But before we do that, just to mention that these particular seats on this particular model are all manually adjusted. Apart from, there is a little button here and that does the lumbar adjustment. That's that little bit that digs in your back nicely. When you've been on a road for a while, you can just adjust that, it's really nice, pushes your back forward. Okay, let's jump in, let's check it out. It is very roomy, it's quite spacious and it's funky. That's the best, I know it's old school word, funky. I like using it, but it is, look at it, it's very retro. And I think that's what I, how I want to describe this car. Nice seven inch touchscreen. We'll have a look at that in a minute because this car is keyless ignition, which is really nice. I like that. Um, we'll, so we don't need to plug it in anywhere. We don't need to push it in. It's great. There is a little start button over here. We're going to put my foot on the, no, if you put it on the clutch, you know, the one, the bit, because this is a manual, so you have a clutch, uh, then it will start. But I'm just going to push it once and that fire up. In between time, while that's firing up, and we'll turn the, aircon down a little bit. You have a glove box down here, which is a reasonable size. Inside it is the obligatory Fiat owner's manual. Let's get rid of these. Complete waste of money, space and time because you can look all this up online. You can even do it on your phone in the car if you have to. How do I change a fuse? Just type it in on Google. That's what we all do, don't we? Why do we need this massive great book to tell us how to change a fuse or something? And look, when I throw it in there, it's taking half the space up. Get rid of them. Up the top here, nice little place to put your, your shades or your mobile, whatever you want to put in there. I like that, double vanity boxes, perfect. As I said, seven and a half inch touchscreen up there. Again, I'm gonna make you wait for that because it's still firing up, as you can see. Let's have a look here. Get a nice, it's, it's a proper little armrest, that. And when you're driving along, that is actually really nice. It's that, it's almost, you know, that Italian feel when you're one-handed driving along there. It's a shame that um, Fiat haven't built somewhere where I can actually deposit the key, so I'm going to drop it in there where the uh, double cup holder is. Let's have a look inside here. Well, it's a tiny, tiny glove box. Um, I don't know what you're going to get, and you probably get a mobile phone in there. That's about it. Um, speaking of mobile phones, this car comes with Android mirroring and Apple Play. 
really nice. All the modern gizmos and bits and pieces. Double cup holder there, which I mentioned, which is now looking after the key. Um, don't know what this thing is. It's sort of a bit scratched and worn out. Haven't got a clue what that is. First of all, I thought it was like a some sort of charger type unit, but yeah, whatever it is, it's there. Haven't got a clue. If you know, stick it in the comment box because I'd love to find out and I'm sure other people watching and go, well, what is that? So if you can let us know, that'd be great. Six speed manual gearbox on this. Don't forget you've got the nine speed auto available as well. A little bit of a cubby down here and a 12 volt adapter. Two USBs there. You could turn your parking beepers on and off by using that button there. Um, now we come to, oh, come on guys. Here we go, my favorite bit. <laughs> okay, check out the size of my knobs, man. Look at those, they are humongous knobs. And they're definitely not Italian, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> they must have imported these from somewhere where they have large knobs uh, because these are extra large. I love them. I mean, okay, let me explain what I'm talking about when it comes to loving knobs. When you get in this car and it's the middle of the winter and it's freezing cold, you've got your gloves on. You don't want to be sort of taking your gloves off so you can adjust your temperatures up here and trying to, and then your hands get cold and it's all freezing and it's all go. You just get in there and you can look at, look at the size. Of, look at that. It is stunning. So easy to use as well. Beautiful. Fiat, love it, love those big knobs. A um, couple more little buttons up here. You've got your hazards, uh, you've got your, oh yeah, that's that, you know the bit when you pull up at the lights and it keeps stalling? You can turn that on and off as well. I hate that, it drives me mad. I know it's saving fuel, I know it's, you know, saving the planet, man. Oh, it does me in when it's like, and it starts again. Um, good when you're in heavy traffic, but not when you stop at the traffic lights. Here we go, we're all fired up. Seven and a half inch touchscreen, we love it. However, it's rather small, isn't it? <laughs> so for someone with my age group with eyesight problems, I'm having to go like that to see where I am. Um, another little knob here and another little knob there. So again, if you get in with your gloves on, th these are definitely the Italian knobs. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, on the left here, volume knob, there you go, lovely. So you can still keep your gloves on and turn your volume up and down, set your tunes, and then over here, you can move through your stations, or if you're listening to your Apple Play or your Bluetooth, whatever, you can change tracks with that as well. Fantastic, you can also turn it on and off from here, tap screen to turn on, there we go, and it turns back on again. How cool is that? So we get media, we've got navigation, we've got Uconnect, which is, this is your telephone system, things like that. There we go, there's your phone system, phone ready, it's found my phone. Settings, and then we've got all your trip monitor as well. Another thing, over here, you've got analog either side and digital in the center. There's a little button here, that also does your lane keepy as well. We'll talk about that in a minute when we get it out on the road. Um, here, on your steering wheel, left-hand side of the steering wheel, this is your scroll button, left and right here, up and down. So you scroll, it's just a little computer system. Works really, really well. Down the bottom here, telephone system, and in the middle, your Ask Fiat button. You know what that is, don't you? It's like Ask Siri or Alexa. So you push that and you say, Siri, I mean, Siri, Ask Fiat, Fiat, tune to Radio 2 or whatever you want. And it'll do it because it's good like that. On the right-hand side, yes, again, these are bits for out on the road, but we'll talk about them now anyway. You've got your cruise control. You've got your sort of lane limiter thingy. You've got your uh, speed restricting as well. Um, over on the far right hand side, just to finish up, is your lighting cluster. And you just set that to auto anyway, which is what I've done. You've got an auto on your wiper as well. And that's it. It's just so nice. I love this little bit of Alcantara shielding for the top here. It's, it's really cute. Um, and speaking of cute, it just feels a lot bigger than cute, this car. It feels a much bigger car to drive than the Fiat 500. Um, and on that note, really, let's get it out on the road because uh, we need to give this a little road test and I'm quite looking forward to it. So here we are, guys. We are finally out on the road in the Fiat 500X. Pleasantly surprised, I can tell you, because I wasn't expecting this car to be as much fun as it has been. I've really, really enjoyed driving this car. First up, it gets a lot of looks. It's really, really attractive. And I mean, for a car to call it attractive is quite unusual. But I've had so many people come over and say, is this the new Fiat 500X? Yes, has been the answer. And the, the reaction has been, wow, isn't it a good looking car? You know, and I, I, I wasn't expecting that sort of reaction from the general public when I'm driving it about. I must admit, it's in this lovely, um, what do they call it, At Mizuno blue. So it's, it's quite a striking color. To actually drive this car as well is fun. 
the little six-speed manual gearbox. I really love it. And that growly little 1.3 engine, and it really does growl. It's a like, <laughs> It loves it, especially in the low gears as well. Um, it absorbs, the suspension absorbs a lot of the, the roady, bumpy bits. Um, I was going to say, it's, it's not like a Fiat 500 suspension. That's quite tight and sporting, throws you about a bit. But it's not as... Um, slouchy, you know, rolly, if you like, as the Panda. It's like a cross, it's in between, and it sort of just nails it. And you can really throw this car about as well. I've had a lot of fun taking this car around bends. <laughs> it's just, the road holding is simply phenomenal. And the brakes are unbelievable, unbelievable. They just stop you on the button. There's no binding, there's no, you know, no crunching. And this also has one of those autonomous braking in town buttons, which, um, which actually worked. It's been a long time since I've had one of those go on, but I had an unfortunate incident, shall we say, with a learner driver who just happened to be indicating to go right and then decided to stop in the middle of the road. And the reactions of this car were superb. They were second to none. The car realized that I wouldn't have stopped in time if, if it had left it to the human, took over, and stopped the car, which was fantastic. Um, and I didn't cause any problem to anybody at all, which was lovely. So there you go, a good time was had by all. Um, Economy-wise on this car, well, I'm getting around about 30 to the gallon around town. Not bad, I hear you say. Out on the run, around about 38 to 40. Again, not bad at all for a little car like this. Versatility is the name of the game with this car. You can put and so much in the back, there's so much space. Um, it, it can take a whole bike in there, I've had dogs in there, I've had shopping in there, I've had three people across the back seat there. So all in all, yeah, I, I, I'm just praising this little car and I think, you know, subject to price, I would buy one. Let's talk price, let's talk a price. Okay, so if you've got cash in, in your pocket and it's burning and you wanna go down and spend your cash, one of these will cost you around from 18,000 UK pounds, from, okay? So that's your entry level. Um, don't forget you've got those three different uh, trim levels at the moment and lots of derivatives of extra packs and bits that you can add to it. Um, with that, when you've purchased the car, that, that um, before we go on to the warranty, that can also be swapped to a personal finance deal. Now, Fiat are doing a special offer at the time of filming this car. The special offer is for, it's called a Hey Google offer or Hey Google Fiat 500X. Ask your salesman about that. 249 UK pounds a month. Super, what a price. Now, I don't know how long that's gonna last for, and I don't know what all the extra bits and pieces, what you need to do with that. I know there's a deposit with it and things like that. So get down to the showroom, have a word. I'm sure if that one isn't available, there'll be another offer available too. Now, the bit I was just about to tell you about, three years unlimited warranty with roadside assistance. You cannot go wrong. This car is designed for you to have unlimited super driving and just enjoy it. And that's where I think Fiat have nailed the 500X. Thanks Fiat, I've had a great week with this car. So there you have it guys, another video from AJ the player and I hope you really enjoyed that one. I did, I enjoyed making it as well. But before you go, I'm gonna give you something for free. Yes, something for free. It's called the Player Bookazine. Now, if you're not aware, the Player is a much bigger organization than just a YouTube channel. We are part of a big magazine. It's a bookazine for guys. It's got cars, it's got boats, it's got planes, golf, helicopters, interviews, everything us guys love. And ladies, if you are watching, please feel free to have a look because there's nothing untoward in our pages. It's all there for everybody to enjoy, but it's mainly geared towards a male lifestyle. There you go. Now, you can have the online version of this completely free of charge. You can't have the big book. Um, that costs £100 each. I'd love to give you one for nothing, but I don't think my boss would be too happy about that. But you can have the online one. And we're not even going to data capture off you, because all you've got to do is put your name in and your email. And then you can download it, or you can actually flick the pages online, because the clever bods at the player have made it so you can do it with your finger or a mouse. Very clever. I love using it. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, okay, so now you need to know how to get that. Two ways. One is, hang on, 
pull that in there. There you go, www.player.co.uk. Go straight to the subscribe section. Just stick your name and your email in there, like I said. Hang on, I'll leave it up there for a minute so you can remember, I'll do better than that, ready? There you go, up there. There's a link straight through to the website. Go there as well if you want. When you get there, just fill in those details that I told you about. Simple as, and it's all yours, and you don't owe us anything. And don't forget, like, subscribe, and comment to the actual AJ the Player YouTube channel. Because if you subscribe, then you're gonna get, you know, regular updates, if you leave the bell sign unchecked, of course, do that. And then we're putting up different videos every week. You know, could be anything. Even I don't know half the time. That's good fun about doing this job. One thing that I would like to ask you is don't forget the thumbs up, guys, because I don't get pay rises, I don't get bonuses, you know, it's no more money in it, but it is. Pat on the back from the boss and the sponsors. It means we're doing a good job. If you don't think we're doing a good job, don't give us a thumbs up. But if you do, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you next week with something else.